Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines. Now, in the last episode, I did a large residential expansion and zoned about half of it, where around a thousand new residents have already moved in. To accommodate them, we built new services, new parks and plazas, a few cafes, and a new postal service. We also streamlined the routes to get to and from work, building a pedestrian crossing to our business park and improving logistics by adding more storage facilities to our agricultural farm and one of them to our business park itself, which actually allows us to control how we export special goods. This in turn can generate us a lot of money, kind of. So I'm hoping to finally see some big profits that we can use to further improve our pollution and our transportation situation later down the line. So let's begin. Now, a little bit of time has actually passed since the previous episode, and I did a small bit of work here in the business park itself. So, we have our pedestrian crossing here, as per usual. It's slightly tidied up now with the pa paving kind of blending into the actual paving a bit more. People actually will walk it this way now. Previously, they were actually walking right out to the edge of the road, going along, and then cutting in and cutting up. So, I've just smoothened that all now smoothened that all out now by moving the nodes closer together and uh, kind of joining it actually to the path so they recognize that that's where they're going. I've also lowered the bridge just slightly. Seems to be totally fine and looks a little bit cleaner now I think as well. Did the same sort of thing over on this side and you'll notice as well that there's now a nice little fence kind of breaking up the business park from the four lane road as well. There's also that path continuing on now with its own crosswalk further in behind the actual factories and we can go down these streets as well cutting across here, cutting across here, and then eventually leading us out to our lovely bakery. So I've also dressed this up with a few extra trees just on the outsides. The ones on the inside can probably fall away at some point. And then I moved the storage facility that we had previously had over on this side, right across from the bakery. It's now next to it, so it can kind of join together as one bigger facility, even though there is a wall, obviously, but it sort of seems like it's more part of it, or at least they're affiliated together for some reason. Um, also threw in a few props, I was kind of playing around with the props, so I threw in a couple of cargo containers, some rubble out the back, put down the decal of no parking in front of these gates, things like that. I could spend a very long time doing beauty building and I really like it, it's just that I don't know enough about the mods in the game and stuff to be able to do everything I want. I need to find a way to be able to paint this paving so that I can paint it wherever I want and it doesn't get overlapped by the actual in-game paving, if that makes sense. Some people say to use decals. I can't find how to do that, so recommend mods if you know any in the comments, and I'll check it out. Uh, what else? Has anything else changed here? Not really. I've just basically brought that fence all the way around this entire business park. So just things are looking a little bit neater, a little bit cleaner, um, but not as detailed as even I'd like right now. But still pretty happy with it. So let's take a little look at what's been going on. About two weeks have passed, I think, since the previous episode. Just playing at regular speed right now. And I have, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I've actually zoned a lot of this area now. So people are starting to move in all the time again. So I just did that off camera just because some of my zoning can be a little, whoops, a little particular and a little finicky. So I just thought just for the beginning of the episode, might as well put it all down, get pretty happy with it. And then as people move in, we can uh, build out roads and change where things are going to go. Now you might be wondering about this big sandy patch area here. This is actually a natural ground resource of oil. I don't plan on ever tapping that oil. But it's nice to kind of build around it, and then maybe in the future I can actually designate it as a park. Now this would be pretty small for the kind of special parks that are in-game. This one here. So you could paint a park area in here. But I think it'd be kind of nice just having a little bean-shaped park. It doesn't have to be too big, it never has to go to like level 5 or whatever. Um, but it could generate us some ticket sales and just bring up the natural beauty of the area. And then the other one could be over here by the lake. This could be a bit more of a nature reserve. Now to get rid of that sandy terrain, I can actually use the ground resource painter. Now I'm never going to use this to give myself resources, but I'll probably use it to take away some just so we actually get the green uh, vegetation back, if that makes sense. So that's my plan for that anyway. All right, I think that's pretty much it. So I've written down as a little to-do for myself that I wanted to zone out that area and do an industrial expansion. So we got 70,000 in the bank. Uh, thanks to our selling of our baked goods. We actually are building them up yet again. We're almost at 50 tons of pastries, <laughs> of bread, bread products that we can sell once we click empty. I like just having it stored up there so I know how much I'm getting before I click to sell. And it's nice to see that we're profitable before even selling anything. Exporting ore products. We make ore. Huh? That's a bit strange, isn't it? You're exporting ore. Owner Lakefield. Yeah, it's a bit odd. I'm sure they probably brought some in and maybe they're exporting the rest. I don't know. Anyway, so I know I'm focusing a lot out in this 
agricultural area, but I want to do even more with it. So the plan now is to, now that we've leveled it up yet again in the previous episode, we're pretty close to getting it to the next one. We need 120 more employees, and I think we can do that relatively easily. Just depends on the money situation. So what I want to do is build out the farm even further and get a lot more fields in there. Now, I was looking at the medium crop field versus the standard. If we have a look in the tooltips, we can actually see the differences. So effectively, a small crop field is going to be a 400 water. And I'll just zoom out a bit. 400 water, and its production rate is 4.8. Let's just say 48, okay? Its production rate of the bigger field, which is twice as big, is 80. So it's not twice as much but it's twice as big. But you do have significantly less water for a bigger field. So if water isn't really a constraint, you should probably go with small crop fields. If water is a constraint, maybe you want to go with the medium crop fields. Now the upkeep is seven uh, per day or 12 per week. Oh, I guess that's what the brackets meant. I was always wondering what the per week thing was. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so I guess the upkeep is a little bit more as well. It's, you know, it's not straight up twice as expensive. It's more than twice as expensive. So I can see it's got some interesting little trade-offs to it, I guess. Um, what I'll probably do, though, is just every now and then just space them, dot them around the different farms. I'll mostly go with the small farms, but every now and then use the bigger ones just to break it up a bit visually. All right, so let's begin. I'm actually going to go with dirt roads, and I think I might upgrade some of our industrial roads to dirt roads to make it look a bit nicer as well. So we just scroll down to the end, grab this one. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Uh, and that gives us more of that farm feel. So I think we need to go out... I think it's eight, isn't it? One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there. So we'll bring this up quite far. And maybe here, just join this one over. And then what I was thinking of doing is just to... So it's not a giant grid, although it will be square-ish or rectangular-ish. It's just trying to break it up so that we turn it maybe the other angle. This is all really good resource area for us, so we've got no issues there, really. We're all fertile land here. So I'm leaving this side as a gap because we can put a fence in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll have to bring the first road in maybe somewhere along this way. And then we need to go over 16. So it's one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So that's... One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So there, I think. I think it's here. Something like this. And then we'll put down our water, of course. And water is looking good. Water availability, that is. So initially, these farms are a little expensive for me. But now it's not so much. We have 70 grand in the bank. I've got no loans, actually. Do I? No loans right now. They're all paid off, so we're totally good. So let's grab industry. We'll go agriculture. We'll select small crop field. And it's actually kind of hard to see, but we'll start over on this end. And just pave the whole thing. Fields. We should be making so much crops that we're actually exporting crops as well, because we've got too many. That would be a good problem to have if we could create that problem. All right, um, maybe we'll bring this one out just a little further this way, and we'll have to space this out as well. So maybe two more farms, and then we'll have another cut road go across it. Um, so let's go like this. Let's grab this one, one, two, and then the road can come down. Now I want the road to come with a space of three, about there. We're going to switch this one to an industrial road. I saw some people, by the way, saying, like, um, you could have people live here and try to work here and make it, like, a more village. This is kind of like a state farm, so I just don't feel like you'd have houses in and around it. But also, I'm really hemmed in for space, like, on this side. If and when I expand tiles out this way, then I'll be more receptive to that idea. <laughs> um, but I, I think these people do live pretty close to where they work. I know they don't live in and amongst the farms, but this isn't some small little local village farm or anything. This is a governing state farm in a way big corporate state farm anyway big corporate farm i guess you could say where the government has a significant hand in it 
so I just don't feel like it would really make sense. Like I said in the previous episode, kind of joking, like the guy that owned this plot of land, he sold it, you know, he sold, he probably made like 40 million selling hundreds of hectares of land to the government and he's out. <laughs> Generational wealth now. But um, I do like the idea, like obviously uh, it'd be cool to have little villages with their own little farms. People are also saying like on the corners, maybe you could put down little corners um, shops and things like that. Again, you could put little one tier or two building, like two by two little corner shops like this and see if anything sprouts up. Right now, my demand for commerce is super low. I just can't even get over the fact that it's just not happening. And if I put down a building myself, it just deletes itself um, or it goes abandoned because nobody needs it. So again, I appreciate, you know, if I was a complete beauty builder and you could turn off, you could change the mods to be in a creative build mode, that would make a lot more sense. But I am playing through the game and to play through the game, there's just certain rules and things that we can or cannot do such as that um, but yeah it's kind of an interesting thing it would be nice to integrate them a bit more I had mentioned as well that you know noise pollution is a factor with all this so having shops nearby houses decreases houses value and decreasing their value um, means that this goes lower and they don't give you as much tax and stuff now not everything has to be super high up but we do need to be profitable at the very least so there's also that to consider um, but yet the general plan anyway is to kind of fill all this area out with large suburbs and then kind of start building more urban better plans downtown areas as we get closer to the beach i sort of want an industrial fishing front and then we have oil and stuff out this way to get but after that i haven't looked beyond what i can see right now on this map and i would assume that Basically, as we get closer and closer to the coast out this way, as we swoop out that way, we get more and more built up. We could do interesting things. We could even cut this river here to let the water just flow around that way, giving us a bit more land to use this way. Something like that could be kind of interesting also. So think about it. We have our industrial, uh, sorry, our railway here, so we can build some sort of freight train that takes things, things through. The nice thing there is actually this business park isn't too far off from that either. Uh, maybe you could actually build a business park on this side in the future. If we unlock this tile, like I said, and have another bridge or something to let us get across to that side. So much could be done. <laughs> I am thinking about all of it, and I do I do keep the ideas coming. Because some of them, I am able to action earlier than others. Others, I have to go like, ah, unfortunately, it's just not going to be that practical for right now. Anyways, um, so let's just keep putting down farms. There's a couple more I want to do. And then what I was thinking here is extra storage. The storage worked out really well for us last time, so just do more of those. Gonna have so much more crops that we need more farms handling it. This looks weird. Don't know if I can blend that any better. Not really. <laughs> yeah, not sure about that. We'll just have to leave it, but I'm not really too sure what I could do to make that look any smoother or nicer. At the very least, you could maybe upgrade to this bit and this bit as well. You're left with a very weird looking thing here. This can only go so wide, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Have to think about that, how we can blend dirt roads into normal roads, or a little bit better anyway. You could actually put down some decals just to look like dirt and rubble is kind of moving in further, so that'd be nice. A lot of traffic's going to be used on this just momentarily while we fill up our storage things. So that's to be expected. All right, just real quick, let's just pave out. I keep saying pave, but just put down all these farms. We have the money to do it. So we'll go with a we'll go with several small ones and then every now and then a large one. That's like the daddy. It's in control of the others. Yeah, actually one joining these two would be fine. All right, there we go. That's a lot. We can still put a little bit more in there, I think. And we'll check our city vitals to make sure we're not going too crazy with the water once they kick in properly. How cool is that? Now, you'll notice it's very dark. So I was having a look at what we could do about that. Go to props and new streetlight, I think is a good one. New streetlight, highway, 
small road and avenue. Maybe small road could look good. I don't know if I could get one that's the same color as these ones, like that kind of yellowish look to it. That would be ideal. So maybe every second farm tile we'll put, put this in. And we could rotate this and put it in every gap then. I think it might actually look a bit better just being the single light rather than both. I don't know. Yeah, I think they're a little too close together this way, so maybe we could just undo those ones. Something about that looks a bit cooler, I think. Alright, same sort of situation here then. Um, might have to pave these correctly, so let's just change... I keep saying pave, I don't know why. Switch it to wheat. Not everything will be wheat. We'll switch to potatoes on a different plot of land as well now. But we'll just select all these to be wheat. All right, these ones can be potatoes. The greenhouses are cool. They like really brighten everything up. He says as he deletes them. Uh, right, so there's so many of these to select. I wish you could just copy and paste it or something, but I don't think you can. It's interesting, the bigger field actually has a different building for potatoes than it did for wheat. It looks kind of more like a little farmhouse for wheat. For this one, it's more like a metal shed. All right, almost done. There we go. Is that it? Nice, kind of cool. All right, um, yeah, we'll just put down a few more of those lampposts on this side now. So we'll start there. It's not going to brighten up just yet because it is morning time now. But that should look kind of cool during the night. And then we'll rotate this one around to face this way. Just stick them in that there. It's actually really hard to see the gaps. There we go, about there. Okay, and then there's just the side on this one. How are we feeling about that? Pretty good, I think. <laughs> Alright, and lots of extra storage for all these things now as well. There we go. Good. Now, electricity availab availability is uh, dangerously low, I would say. So I was thinking, I was actually looking through this as well. Want to go green, you know, try to get a bit more eco-friendly. We've been using coal now to get ourselves to 4,500 population. I think it's time we look to other alternatives. We have the advanced coal, uh, coal power plant. Uses coal to produce electricity, creates less pollution due to advanced carbon capture technology. Now, of course, you could start going full green if you wanted to, but... I think it's still just good to make a slight change. This actually gives us more power output. 56 megawatts, 160 upkeep per week for water. Water is nothing on this coal plant. So again, more strain on the water system. Upkeep 960 per week. This is upkeep 560. So more expensive, overall less efficient, but less pollution. Could be kind of nice. What I was thinking as well is out here is where our old car car cold power plant is. And uh, we could probably build some new roads and stuff. In fact, industry is looking to grow right now. So the thing I was hoping to do with the money before getting too sidetracked is actually... Yeah, just realized. So I'm going to keep this road the way it was, actually, thinking about it. Sorry for being a bit indecisive there, because I'm going to build more of the factories out this way. So we want more flour. Now, we could put more in at the back, but I want to go out this way first, and then we'll tuck some more storage and things in that way. All right, so I think each one is like 10,000 or something. That's special, actually. We don't need special. We just need regular flour mill. 45 workplaces. That should give those guys some jobs first. I think it's a good idea to have storage on that side. So we'll actually just tuck ourselves in a bit more like this. Although flour storage is there. So yeah, I guess they're going to use it anyway. So 15,000. Let's take a loan for this other one. Let's take both loans. It's fine. We'll pay it all off. 
We're building up pastries. We're in the pastry business. We're rich. Alright, two more flour mills. The reason I wanted to do that is just because I noticed that the bakery is still often kind of low on flour. And we can always increase that production rate further and further. Now, I'm not sure, but are you limited to only ever putting one of those down? They must be placed next to it. No, you can do multiple bakeries. Wow. Okay. Good to know. I love this, like, little humble beginning, little, you know, local farmer. There he is. Yep. Yeah. Back in my day, we used to grind the flour up in a little mill. And now look at it. It's these massive industrial complexes holding silos, shifting the flour around to all the different things. You can tell I'm uh, well-versed in farming lingo. I actually grew up on a farm, surprisingly. Anyway, these are just going to be busy for a while, but I'm, I have no doubt they'll calm down. Also, you want to maybe give them increased speeds. So I was thinking 50 for the industrial roads, pretty much. Because it's 60 once you get out. So let's keep it at 50. Just speed up the movement of these guys a bit. And then for the dirt roads, 40 I think is fair enough. Just to say that, like, they'd go 50 if they could, but the dirt makes it difficult. It's normally 30, by the way, on the dirt roads. Looking good, though. I think this is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy for parking to happen along there. Not... Yeah, I guess actually it's so it's so spread out, the parking actually looks pretty good. That's cool just seeing an SUV down here. Who owns it? Annabelle Lee. Oh, she's deep in the field. <laughs> Can't even see her in there. What, is it? what was this? What is taking the post office so long? Are they mowing the lawn or what? Oh, a lost package. Oh my god. Tell me about it. I've had so many things go lost recently, it's unbelievable. Wow, this place is looking busy. Very busy. So our post office is here. Post vans in use, 10 out of 10. Trucks in use, 0. Sorted mail, 70,000 out of 100. Do you need an increased budget then? Let's give you a daytime budget of 150%. Interestingly, you see, this is, it's misleading when it says percentage. because it, And it does this for other things too. You'll notice that you can increase your power by 50%. But it doesn't feel like it goes up by 50. And here we can actually see that number betraying me. I've added 50%. And it's given me 3 extra vans in use but in theory it should have given me five right because 10 is at 100 percent so i don't know why it does that but that is just the way it operates but three more vans should uh, help carry some of that mail around no problems delivering mail we can actually see where he's planning on going okay then that's a really weird thing for you to do unless you're stopping somewhere here He has gone down to 99% already, actually, so maybe he already delivered something. But I was just thinking, you came out of here. Could you not... Oh, you can't cross over. I see. Interesting. So if you wanted to go that way, you couldn't. You had to go up and around. Oh. <laughs> okay. So be it, then. Don't really think I can do anything about that. If we're going to be on a four-lane road with a barrier thing in between. I don't think I can do anything about it. Don't think you can make a little cut through, right? I'll leave it as is. Problem for another day. That kind of thing. Guess it'll just have to educate my forward planning a little bit better to make sure we don't go too crazy with that. Hey, we're losing two and a half thousand. That's probably just because of the heavy importing for agricultural products. We built these two, so that's all good. We have animal products that are being stored up here. They're up to 10% now. That's gaining slightly. Flowers at 1. 19 out of 19 workers. Worker-wise, how are we doing? 350. Wow. Yeah, we're gaining. We gained 70 since we started the episode, actually, so that's good. Up to 468 is our capacity, but 400 is what we need to grow again. But I'll, I'm not in any hurry. There's nothing really I want now. These are kind of the things I mostly wanted. I'll just switch these to wheat as well. Just for aesthetic purposes, before we get out of this area for a while. Switch this to uh, gravel. I 
I was thinking, so the reason I didn't increase the bush, brush sooner was because I was like, oh, maybe I'll leave some sparse bits of grass. But that would kind of look, in, it doesn't look really good. All right, I'll leave it. That's better, though. And we still have room to put those things in, should we wish. And we've room for the fencing now. Maybe we could just do that very quick. Even if we just followed the grid, it would look alright, and then we can um, maybe fine-tune it a bit. That's strange. There you go, connected. These industrial roads look strange without markings because they just suddenly end. The markings actually make them look a little bit better, I think. Man, I don't envy the people that do this, the beauty building kind of stuff. Because you could spend such a long time fine tuning these. And have fun doing it, <laughs> to be fair. That's a bit better, maybe just a little bit. Especially from a distance, the place is looking good. I also tucked in this, uh, the power cables next to the bridge, so I think they look a little bit better too. Always busy, always doing these little side jobs, these side hustles <laughs> in between episodes. All right, so now that we've got 70 grand in the bank, I think we can afford that power. So let's go with a clean power plant, or slightly clean, cleaner. Do we need to put it there? I'll tell you what, I'd be tempted just to get rid of the old one, put a new one in here. It would disrupt a lot of the jobs. Um, e whew, I don't know, I'm definitely going to be moving it. I feel like we're just one grid short. This place looks good. I was thinking recycling center and bus depot would go somewhere in here. So I'm just not that confident. Maybe there would be better, so I'll destroy one factory. And I'm going to get rid of this power plant. So it's still a net gain overall of electricity. Not much. Looks nice. A lot of traffic on this road. How are we doing traffic-wise? We're still at 81% overall. And then I guess cars have to stop when trucks pull up like this. This is why I feel like this would all be better served if it was a four-lane road. But I think the problem with the four-lane road is you can't do what he just did, which is cross over two lanes to get to this building. So I guess maybe it's fine the way it is. But it does mean that tr cars are backed up while they wait for trucks to pull in and out of places. But they do smooth it out eventually. How much are we storing up here now? 64 tons? We'll wait till it gets a little higher. Where are you planning on going, by the way? Driving home. Home. Driving home. Could you not drive home out this way? What was the problem? Why are you all going the same way? Also, what time is it? 12.38. You're all going home for lunch. Uh, let me check that just to see. Is there restrictions on this road? Is there a reason that you didn't go this way? Or do you all just live out to the... Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. They give way for those cars. Oh my god, that scooter. Oh yeah, that's okay. I was gonna say he barely made it. Hey, I've noticed something by the way. I was watching some of my citizens um, just in between episodes when I was thinking I was getting the thumbnail or something. And which house was it? It was this house. Inside of this house, yeah, Rosie, my girlfriend, noticed like the scooter and she was like, oh, who owns that? And I was like, oh, Shirley Scott owns it. And then we saw what she was doing, and it said that she was going to the shops to buy City Skylines 2, which I thought was really funny. They obviously just patched that in, but it said, like, visiting the pharmacy to buy City Skylines 2. I'm like, oh, shameless, shameless promotion. But no, it's all good. I, if you're going to do it. We're, the reason we were looking at this house at all is because we were trying to find where would our house be, and we were like, oh, this one's really nice. <laughs> so maybe that one. We could lock it down as historical. So it doesn't change. I don't think I've seen it anywhere else as well at the moment. So that's kind of cool. 
How's our plaza doing? It's totally fine. We, I was thinking of building that public library there in a restaurant. But these guys probably have enough. If we have a look at the heat map for levels. So I'm, I'm partially confused on this. Because when you look at a house and its levels, it actually says educate more citizens to allow the building to be upgraded. So that's interesting. But I thought it was actually to do with land value. Because when you put down parks and things, these guys become happier. And it seems like that goes up. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe happiness is separate to whatever this thing is. is. Because if you look in then commerce, it says attract wealthier customers. So I assume higher education equals higher wealthy. So you need this to be around places that have higher wealth? I don't, I don't know. And then this one would be what? Building needs to be covered by more services. Oh, interesting. That actually reminds me. People had mentioned that you should probably get like fire and stuff protection on these. That's true. I don't think I'm going to put a fire station in there. Although maybe not a bad idea considering it says it'll level them up. So should we? I guess, yeah, sure. Let's do it then. Let's put one right here fire station for this whole area it said cover more services they should be happy with that um but more importantly i was going to do a district policy so they have their own district here it's called washington district and the policy could be smoke detector distribution significantly reduce risk of fire increases the upkeep of all the buildings but less chance of fire and in an industry i think you're more prone to fire so that'd be good um so let's just build this out. This isn't an industrial district. It's just a regular district. It happens to be industry only in terms of zoning. Am I going to give everyone smoke to test it? No. Come on. Hey, congratulations. Crown Farms reached level four. So that means we have 200 employees out there now. That's pretty good. Clothing factory, farm maintenance building, large barn, and a slaughterhouse. Now, a large barn I've never seen before. Let's check it out. Will it fit in here? No, it goes back four. Oh, I could stick it somewhere like there if we wanted to. Again, could I be cheeky and bring a road in? So one, two, three, four. Oh my god, it might work just perfectly if it'll let me do it. So one, two, three, four. So here, just go into there. And then we could put in two more barns. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cool. Now, I got distracted, but I put this fence in and didn't move it. I meant to just bring it up to the edge a bit. Just so it looks a little like it's actually guarding the field somewhat. I'm a little afraid to actually touch the wheat. Because um, I feel like it might delete the field or something, but maybe not. I think that's pleasant. Quite pleasant. Same goes for like going this way. I feel like it doesn't let you, you know. Again, if you know a way that I can clip the fences through this, or if I need a mod to do that. Hey, this works, actually. That doesn't um, break the farm or anything, does it? Let's just leave it on one side and see what happens. Now, I can't bring that up any further for some reason. Let's go turn off the grid. I don't know, right to there. If that stays there, then excellent. Great. Um, but as far as I know, pavement and fences are not props. So prop anarchy doesn't affect them. They're networks. And overlapping networks with buildings and things can end up uh, causing problems. So, I don't know. I'm still figuring some of these things out. But if that's the case, that'd be great. Um, because what I'd like to do, even just for instance here, let's just bring this up. Is if we grab that fence again, just real quick. And I'd love to, you know, just pop it at the back here. Why not? But it says, you know, space already occupied. So we'll turn off our grids yet again. Put it here. Bring it all the way across. Doesn't really want me to do that because it's crossing that barn space. I feel like it should just be a visual thing rather than a logic thing. But still, it looks nice if we were just to take a little snapshot and not think about it too hard. That looks cool. We got um, 
Matthew McConaughey here driving. He's going to go into the cornfield. Oh, no, it's not. It's Murph. All right. I will be back in one second. All right, I'm back. Apologies, had to go quickly feed my cats. I've set up timers to remind me when I'm supposed to do it because we're trying to get them on like this strict schedule because basically we got a new cat a little while ago and she is a voracious eater. She just loves to eat. She's like a dog. She'll eat anything. She eats crisps, doesn't matter, pizza, whatever. It's really weird. It's very strange. She seems to eat anything. The other one, the original cat, the first one. Oh my God, look at all these train of cars all coming out at the same time. Or trucks. I guess that's the problem with putting them down at the same time. Their timers are all aligned with each other. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, the original cat is a fussy eater. She eats one type of food and she doesn't, you know, eats at very weird times and stuff. And she'll often just walk away and then come back to her bowl. But she can't do that now while this other one is around. And it's causing upheaval. But I won't bore you anymore with that. Um, Alright, hey, we've got a fire. Good thing we put down a new fire service. <laughs> that was a coincidence. There we go. Three, four, five trucks here. That is overkill. Good job, though, guys. These guys are actually packing up. They think they're done. It's like, uh, I don't think this this guy's just casually walking in. I wonder in City Skylines too, will these um, firefighters be real people that live in actual places? Because in the moment they're just from the service building. If that makes sense, they don't actually live out their lives properly. And the traffic is a nightmare in here. Everyone's clipping through each other as they look to put out the fire, but it looks like it's under control. How are we doing? It's still at just tier two in a bit. That's all right, though. Okay, let's speed up time through the night. And I think what would be good now, during nighttime, while it's relatively low traffic, we're 80 tons large. Let's empty this bad boy out. Watch all these trucks leave with our produce. There we go. The vans are on the way. Look at that, all full. There's more to go as well. Keep emptying it out. Six trucks in use. Excellent. So now we'll switch it back to fill. Just leave it now. And it'll take a while. We saw that it took a while before. It could take multiple weeks even. But this number should jump up rapidly. Now it's a bit of a... It's not the most accurate number, right? Because it's telling us that, for instance, it sold 5,000 in one day. Or let's say 2,000 in one day. Therefore, it says, well, for the week, you're making 14,000. But it's, no, I'm not selling that every day. I sold it one day. <laughs> so it'll have this massive jump when we make the sale, and then it'll fall back down to its normal amount. Uh, how's power, by the way, now that we've built that other thing? Yeah, it's better. Water is getting a little low. Again, with the pollution and stuff, I wanted to improve the situation, right? We are, like I said before coloring the rivers brown and uh if we have an eco water treatment that might help things a bit so let's maybe invest into that now so we have here eco water outlet the green alternative while eco water outlet is quite expensive it helps purify the water so i think two of these for a total cost of eight thousand will be good to improve our drainage and we can actually put it somewhere just down here and maybe change it uh change where it goes in the future because I don't have access to this part part just yet. But this will be less pollution than we were doing before. So I'll put two of them here. And then we have to hook them up with pipes, of course. And power. Okay. And then power is going to be a little tricky because it's going to go fairly far. Alright. And then we're going to get rid of the original. So that one's gone now. Alright, and those power lines can go with it. So we're still pulling all of our water out of the central area here. The water pumping station is taking it from that lake. Rather strangely, to be honest, because it's... I don't know how it hasn't drained by now, but <laughs> it hasn't. Um, but yeah, we should see, after a while, it's not going to be very noticeable f that quickly, but we should see that the river is eventually returned to being pretty much blue. Um, maybe not perfect, but pretty good. Oh, wow. Oh, sorry, that's not pollution. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Instantaneous. But no, you can see it's already starting to fade, and it'll fade and fade and fade as it makes its way down and over. And then we'll see, like, 
a little brown patch here, but it should be a lot more faint than it ever has been before. All right, I don't know if we've actually made our money from selling our stuff yet. Seems like not really. We're still kind of in the negative, actually. And of course, we are paying off two loans now, so that's not helping the money situation. How's the flour industry? We're all good there. Bakers, bakers, they're baking. But there we go, 29,000. Look at that. We obviously just sold and made. I don't know. I, I mean, was that an instant 30,000? Because I looked away for a second, looked back, and we're just 39 now. So I think we did it. So it's not really going to be the weekly income, but we did just move quite a lot. And it should maybe bump again. Maybe. Because the, the second batch of cars went soon after the first. No, it looks like that's probably it. Cool. Just like that, we're back up to 40k. Happy with that. And these are now more full than they need to be. Because they're set to being balanced. But they've overfilled. So what's going to happen is, if they really get full and they can't do anything about it, they'll sell. And we'll make money off of the exports of just crops. At the moment, we imported crops to fill them. That just seems to be what happens when you first put them down. But that should kind of be it. I'm loving this number, by the way. 31,000. 31 large. All right. So, with that money, we're in service of the city, of course. So, we will honor our commitments and build a recycling center. I'm looking at slaughterhouses. We'll get to that some other point. So recycling center, go in here, go to garbage. Recycling center, and I'm going to build two. So what's the rate that they do? Processing rate, 24,000 a week. The landfill that we have is 800,000 capacity, but it just fills when it needs to. This is more processing where it's actually, it could overfill and not get through the garbage quick enough. So I'm going to build two of them, hoping that that is enough. So put one right there and put one right behind it. They can kind of look like they're part of the one unit, as it were. And then what we can do is head over to our landfill and say, I want you to empty. So you're going to empty. These trucks are now going to take stuff out of here and bring it to the recycling center. So if you read about the recycling center just very quickly, it says that citizens can recycle more different kinds of waste than this, uh, when the city has a recycling center, making less garbage pile up. The center produces small amounts of raw materials from the waste. So you actually get something out of it as well, which is nice. I think all garbage can go there, if I'm not mistaken. It just it backs up very quickly. Um, what we can do as well, policy-wise, is in the Washington District, we can we have the smoke detector thing on, but we can also now go with recycling plastic. Recycling centers work with 20% efficiency. It costs you 100 per recycling center per week. So that's going to be a 200 per week upkeep policy for this particular area because we have two of those buildings. But we should get through stuff a lot quicker. And we'll see all these garbage trucks come out and start doing their thing. So we're, it's a green initiative that we've got going on. A cleaner coal, clean coal. <laughs> uh, at least cleaner coal. And then some recycling initiatives. And then maybe in the next episode we'll start working on public transport as our place is starting to really fill out now. But there's always more to do and more to more places to explore. Let's um, expand this area out now. And then also... Let me just cut that in actually a bit. Then also this area was one I was planning on building out too. So we can just build a little road. Maybe... Gridify it here. And just bring it down like this. Yeah, I don't need to angle it too much, I don't think. Just something like that to make it look a little bit more interesting. So, people can now move in next to the landfill because it's emptying, we're getting rid of it, the pollution's going away, the coal power plant will also go away. So you can now fill up this side of town, safe in the knowledge that it's going to be a cleaner town, a tidy town. At least that's the proposed plan. Who knows how long it might take to actually happen, but <laughs> that's what we're planning on doing. All right, so... I just changed this road a little bit because we want to take away the zoning here. So just upgrade this, get rid of that zoning. There we go. Alright, new little cul-de-sac. What's the name of this one? Fairview Street. So we have Fairview, Scott Street, and Underhill Street. Nice. All right, things are looking good. So we've um, employed a lot more people 
We've leveled up our industry. We've made good amounts of money. We just made another huge batch, by the way. That's the second wave, I think. And I've just watched it. Holy crap, we went up to 55,000. I think we had something like seven, and it just jumped up to 55. So we've obviously just sold whatever we, we were making there. Those pastries, man. Those tasty pastries. But from now on, they're set to fill. So they should be filling this up, but storage is still empty. They haven't actually made another batch yet. Look at all the flour we have. I wonder, are they making money now as well, exporting just that regular stuff? 2,800 um, for crops. Not bad. I'll take it. And we still have more industries to go. Of course, we've just unlocked the unique factories of lemonade. Now, this one, I've never seen this or dealt with it before. So it's crops. It looks like glass. Or maybe, I assume that would make sense, right? You're selling it in bottles. So it looks to me like glass. It could be plastic, maybe. Uh, what else did we get? We got slaughterhouses. We have also a clothing factory now. So that looks like animal products, crops, and then something else. The three dots, I don't know what that is, so I'll have to... Oh, it says plastic. Actually, it says it in the tooltip. There you go. I should just read these tooltips. Yeah, it says glass. So it is glass. Glass and plastic. So we can look to make that ourselves or just import it, right? You can import the oil and work from there. I don't know if you can actually import refined goods. Maybe you can. Because certain things says you can't. For instance, we're storing flour. But if I say... Yes, it says here, flour is produced by flour mills. Cannot be imported. Has to be produced locally. Can be exported for money. So there you go. So maybe glass can be, maybe it can't be. I might have to check the wiki on certain things like that. Traffic-wise, last thing I think we'll check before we wrap up this episode. Looks like we are pretty good. The busy areas are still appropriately busy, but nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Free-flowing, and I think, like I said, I've been saying it for a while, but public transport is going to be coming in next, I think. And this will give us a nice little influx of younger workers out this way, too, as our aging population takes hold. We're up to 28% seniors, which actually percentage-wise is lower than what we were before. 1,400 seniors, 1,200 adults, 750 young adults. All right, guys, that's going to have to be it for this episode. Pretty happy with the progress so far. We got good money in the bank. Population's growing. We're getting really close to the next milestone as well of Busy Town. As always, let me know your suggestions, what you'd like to see, and things you think I could do to improve. And I'll see you in the next one.